So if I want my hair color to last longer, I'd use permanent color, right? Hi, I'm Julie Miller with Strands of Inspiration, and today's topic is inspired by that question. There are many different types of color, different categories of color, but I really think that they were named in a really bad way. The names of the types of color, like permanent or semi-permanent, implies how long they'll last. And to a certain extent, that's true. But really, each color category is about a type of chemistry, how it works, where it lives within that hair strand and in the structure. And the type of hair you're starting with will usually decide how long it's going to last. So no, using permanent color won't always last the longest in all hair types. Understanding structure, the, the stuff we learned about structure in beauty school, is really key to understanding your technical consultation, the chemistry of all the categories of color, and how it's going to affect your decisions on which type to pick and how to apply it to the hair. So today we're starting with a little review of structure, how that relates to consultation, and jumping into the first two types of color that are probably the safest and the simplest and perhaps the fastest growing color categories for the last five years or so. Temporary and semi-permanent color lines. So let's jump in. So the first two types of color that we're going to talk about are temporary and semi-permanent. Before we talk about color chemistry, we have to talk about the structure of the hair. That's very important and understand understanding how color works. So just like we learned in beauty school, in the hair structure, we have the inside of the hair, that's the cortex. We have the layers that are kind of like scales that are on the outside of the hair. That is the cuticle. And, and then inside the cortex, there is usually, but not always, when you look at it under a microscope, it appears as a little line inside the cortex. That is the medulla. When we talk about hair color and color chemistry, there really are only two parts of the hair structure that are really important to understand. The medulla, I am sure, has a function like everything else in our body, but as far as hair color goes, no one's found any conclusive evidence that the medulla affects hair color as, as we do it today. So we don't even have to think about the medulla. We only have to think about the cuticle and the cortex. When we do our technical consultation, there are a few things that we have to consider. Two really, really important things are texture and porosity. Texture would be the diameter of an individual hair strand. So that means if you took a cross section of a hair and it looked really skinny, that would be fine hair. If it was really large, like a fishing line, that would be coarse hair. So texture is measured in fine, average, or coarse. All the recommendations that are given to you by manufacturers when they're given the directions of use for their hair color lines are all for average hair. That means if they say a 20 volume can give you two levels of lift, but the hair is really, really fine, you could perhaps get three levels of lift. Or if the hair is very, very coarse, you may only get one level of lift. So it's really important to analyze the hair before you begin so that you can adjust your usage from the, the basic guidelines that are laid out. As far as the structure of the hair is concerned, texture is determined by the cortex. Everyone still has the same amount of cuticle around the hair, but the inside of that hair, the cortex, it determines whether it's fine or coarse. A hair that's very, very fine will have a little cortex and a coarse hair will have more cortex to keep it in its most simple terms. 
Porosity is super important to determine whenever you do your technical consultation. Porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb and maintain moisture. Most hairdressers have a pretty good idea and understanding of porosity, but not really deep in how that affects the hair and how that affects your decisions in your formulation when you're formulating a semi-permanent or demi-permanent hair color. So as far as the hair structure, Structure, porosity is determined by the cuticle. So if the hair has a really flat, tight, tenacious cuticle, then the hair has a resistant porosity. If the hair has a really lifted cuticle, then then it has an extreme porosity. Usually resistant porosity is only found in virgin hair. Once the hair has been colored, in any way with a color that has a developer or ammonia in it, the hair becomes porous. Then it's just a measure of how porous. Usually there are multiple porosities on one head. So they could have a resistant porosity at their new growth, a slight porosity through their mid shaft, and extreme porosity on their ends. So it's really important to Take the time to analyze all the zones of the hair that you're working with and formulate accordingly. So getting into color chemistry and the categories of color. I really wish that color categories had different names. All the years that I've been in salons teaching hair color, I've had the question asked of me many, many times. Well, if I want my color to last longer, wouldn't I use a permanent color? And if I want the color to fade out, wouldn't I use a semi or a demi-permanent color? And that's not necessarily the truth. It depends so much on texture, porosity, what you're starting with, a whole bunch of factors. Let's begin by talking about how these two types of color are the same, how they're similar. So both temporary and semi-permanent color, they both use direct dyes. You may have heard of direct or indirect dyes. Direct dyes are pre-colored, pre-formed dye molecules that they're already the color they're going to be. They they do not need an oxidizer, something to oxidize them and make them turn into a dye molecule. So they come straight out of the, the tube or the bottle, exactly how they're supposed to look. So they do not need a developer. Porosity is also key to consider when you're using both of these. Both of these types of colors live in the cuticle layers. So a temporary color lasts one shampoo, where a semi-permanent, generally speaking, will last five to eight shampoos. So a temporary color is something that goes onto the hair, just covers the cuticle, and will be washed out the next time you shampoo. So large, preformed dye molecules that are applied and they just sit on top of the cuticle layers. So these would be colored mousse, colored rinses, like good old fancy full rinse. This is also things like the spray-in hair color you use at Halloween or colored mascara, hair chalks, any of those type of products. Also, those temporary root covers, some of them look like an eyeshadow, a spray, a cream stick. There's many different types, but you can put them on your gray roots to mask as you're waiting for your next hair appointment. Those are considered temporary hair colors. Semi-permanent uses a little smaller dye molecules. They still sit on top of the hair, but because they're smaller, they can go a little bit deeper into the cuticle layers. The molecular weight refers to the size of the molecule. So the smaller the molecular weight, the deeper it can penetrate into the hair. Imagine that it's a lot, the cuticle is a really big wide open door. The cortex is a teeny tiny door. You know, you're, it's a special club. Not everybody's allowed in. And the smaller the molecule, the deeper it can penetrate. So you can see that depending on both of these molecules, if the hair is very porous, meaning the cuticle is wide open, these molecules can penetrate more deeply 
than they would on virgin hair or a resistant porosity hair. That's why if you put a semi-permanent on top of virgin hair, you may see it the first day and then someone shampoos it and it seems to be immediately gone. And that's because if the cuticle is so closed and tight, that semi-permanent could not penetrate. But you may have seen a temporary color, like spray-in color. Everyone's seen the little girl who is really blonde, who's been outside swimming in the pool all summer long. So her ends are very lightened and, and extremely porous. And they do some spray-in color for crazy hair day at school. And she's got pink ends for the next two months. Her porosity is so extreme that those dye molecules were able to really penetrate in and it was more difficult to get them out. The number of shampoos is just a guideline. It really depends on the texture and porosity how long they're going to last. Now, semi-permanent, when we know it has no developer, when you have someone who comes in who's been coloring their own hair at home, you ask them, oh, what kind of color did you use? And they, oh, it's just a semi-permanent. I bought it at the store and it's supposed to wash out in 20 washes so that was three months ago so it's all out of my hair and you look at her and she's got two inches of regrowth and she's got a diffused line of demarcation her ends are lighter and you're like there is no way that's a semi-permanent color well consumers don't understand the terminology of the next category of color chemistry demi-permanent so they use the term semi-permanent permanent on their box and on in their marketing so that just regular consumers can understand that it's not meant to last forever but it's actually a demi permanent so when you question them and they say they used a semi-permanent you can ask them well when you took it out of the box was there just one tube or were there two things that you had to mix together? And they'll say, oh yeah, there was two things. You know, it was a shine enhancing activator or whatever they want to call their developer. But when they have to mix two things together, you know that that is an oxidative type color and it would not be semi-permanent. It would be into the next level, which would be demi-permanent. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you'll catch my next video where we're going to talk about when you can use semi-permanent color, how to use it properly, and then we're going to get into the big bad color chemistry of demi-permanent and permanent hair color. If you have a question that you'd like to see answered in a future video, be sure to put it in the comments and share this with someone that you think it would help. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon.